Right, so we're going to start working on uh, our data that's coming in from uh, the website. And so I'm going to create a, a simple subdomain on my website and then I'll install WordPress on it. And thereafter I'm going to install some dummy info uh, on it that we'll be able to track in our new application. So on my, uh, on my site I'm going to install WordPress 5.21, graph, uh, I'm going to just leave everything uh, as default as that is going to be. We'll go ahead and install uh, our graph, our data source, what's going to be our data source and just by installing WordPress. So while that is loading, we can check out a way of uh, getting a demo theme, de demo data in WordPress. And uh, there's a, a themes unit uh, that, that we can use. Um, Basically, this is going to, it's an XML file that we'll download and then we'll just be able to get a raw data information from WordPress. So I'll just save this as, I'll save it in my, my downloads and maybe we'll pick it up later. And then uh, the other thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a GraphQL, WP GraphQL, which, is, which can be got on uh, the WP GraphQL um, GitHub account and that is um, by just coming here so we will need uh, both this and we also need uh, the GraphQ graphical um, IDE that is installed in our, in our website. So what I'll do is I'm going to get the, the latest release and then I'll just do the same, get the latest release because uh, we could have some things that are merged into into those particular pieces and they're not ready for download so I'll just download the latest release. Um, we'll just save that and then I will go for also version 0 0.34 of our GraphQL in itself. So once we save those two I think uh, we are ready now to go install. So the next things that we're going to do is we're going to import our XML file um, we'll just use the WordPress in, um, WordPress XML installer. Meanwhile, I'll just let you know what uh, what GraphQL is a um, rather wide topic for me to just share in um in, in just one sitting. Um, but what's going to do is that um we're going to be able to send out what looks like a JSON format string um query to our server. And then we are going to get back uh, also JSON response uh, from our server. So there's a lot you can do. You can actually read about uh, GraphQL from um, this uh, this URL, which is uh, wpgraphql.com. So you'll be able to see a lot that uh, is written about it, what it means, how it looks like. You can actually even read through the documentation. One of the things that uh, has been happening in the GraphQL world for WordPress is that uh, advanced custom fields has also been released. Um, there's a plugin that can extend the metadata that's added on posts and also something for WooCommerce that is uh, has been in production um, basically that has been is being produced and um, right now is ready for testing. Uh, so we've had our WordPress importer uh, installed and now we we'll just activate that plugin and then when we go back to our tools and click import um, we are able to run the importer and then uh, we'll just browse for for our file that we saved in our downloads and that is uh, we'll just uh, we'll just sort this out um, by date so we'll choose that file and then click upload which will allow us to actually get some demo data from uh, from this particular XML. What happens is that inside it, it has URLs that lead to save data. And once everything has come in, we're able to just link it. And we can talk about downloading and importing the files, uh, attachments, those are basically the pictures that go to the individual articles so at the end of the day, when we look at this, um, it's going to be a, a big, beautiful, a nice, fully loaded uh, website. 
so we can just close this up because we're already done with it and then uh, we'll just head over to the docs of uh, uh, WP GraphQL and we'll look at some things, we can also just close this and yeah we are ready to have fun and we'll just check out what our blog looks like now and yeah uh, so we are ready to go and uh, all I'm going to do now is just install the, uh, the plugins that I do need, uh, the ones that I downloaded, that is uh, WP GraphQL and the IDE of uh, WP Graphical uh, installed, so I'll just install this. Um, the reason I'm installing this off my local machine is because these have not been yet put into the WordPress repository, so you can't get them directly from the repository of WordPress. So I'll just install them from uh, my local instances and then we'll be good to go. So we have one. So right now we'll upload the other plugin for the IDE and just install it. Um, then we'll be ready and good to go to our next level and next phase. Right. So we'll just go look at the installed plugins and then we'll activate both both plugins. Uh, okay, so we have this and this and we'll just uh, activate both plugins. And then something happened. So right here we have a, a new uh, me menu uh, item and this is going to show us <coughs> um, what we are going to be querying. So uh, one of the things that you have to do when you are setting up your website for uh, GraphQL is that you have to go to your permalink structure and be very, very, very specific about having it in the postname type. Uh, basically, that's the only way uh, GraphQL works uh, w with WordPress. It has to be in the postname structure. So once we go back to our IDE, that little error that was here is now gone. And the good thing about uh, uh, GraphQL is that it's self-documenting. So as you click all these particular links, you're able to see what you can actually query. And we're also going to see that you can even query uh, just by using the, the uh, control and space bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this out and I'm going to add two brackets and I'm going to start by pressing control space bar and I have all these options in here. So what I'm looking for is I'm going to query some posts and when I go into the posts I have the options of getting the nodes and then uh, the next thing that I'll be getting from here is I'm going to look for the ID of the post, I'm going to get the title of the post, so we get the featured image and then as we're getting the featured image of course we want the URL but we'll look for what else is there, we're given the alt text and then we are given, uh, the URL is uh, in most cases called the GUID, the GID. So once we have this request in uh, uh, GraphQL, is you'll actually see that we quickly get back information from our, from our server, we already get this. So if I wanted to get something more, I could go for the content and when I hit the API again I'm going to get a uh, little content here. So if I wanted to get maybe the excerpt, okay so once I get the excerpt I can just hit that and actually I'm going to get back the short versions of that. So this is how we are going to be calling our data. Now this, the way GraphQL works is that it's only giving you on demand what you want to actually get which is a lot different from the REST API that gives you so much data. So we're just going to be getting back a very small payload and this is what we're actually going to use in our React application to make sure that uh, once it's connected to our, um, our little section in our HTML page, we have all the information that we do need. I look forward to going ahead, see you then.